Look guys, phase three of Season of Discovery came as a huge surprise to all of us. In fact, I was barely prepared when the announcement came, so I've spent the last three days prepping non-stop. I've actually prepped so many prequests I can get all the way to level 43 instantly. And I've also planned my dungeon route to level as fast as possible to level 50. I've also stockpiled dozens of secret items and consumables as well. I can confidently say now that I'm ready for phase three. Lucky for you, I've documented my entire journey as well, so you can get as prepared as possible very fast and avoid all my big mistakes. Here's the exact route I plan to do. We're going to start with pre-questing turn-ins. There are over 30 different quests that can be turned in very fast and then over 300,000 experience. That'll instantly put us at level 43. Then I'll be joining up with my pre-planned group and heading straight into Nomergon. We don't know the total experience yet, but it'll likely be between 40 and 45,000 XP. From there, it's Alderman time until level 44 while completing more quests. Then from 44 to 50, we've planned to spam Zolferak with our big AoE cleave group. If things go to plan, we'll be inside Zuggen Temple after about 12 hours. Let's dive into more detail on each of the steps. First, the pre-questing. That's basically just doing the highest XP quests in advance, and then you can turn all of them in on the launch day to get huge XP. Although you can only have 20 quests, you can store all sorts of extra items that can start quests as well. In total, you can have over 300,000 experience saved up. Ideally, that'll allow you to completely skip any Scarlet Monastery spam. Then you can go straight to high XP dungeons like Alderman and Zulfarak. There are two main pre-questing routes people are using right now. There's the Alenia route and the Jordi route. The Alenia route is free and it gives you step-by-step -step directions all the way to 50. The Jordi route comes with a weak R and a rested XP route, but it is locked behind a $5 Patreon. I'll link both options below the video. The next key to my route is that I've already pre-planned the five-man group I'll be leveling with. That means I won't be sitting in trade chat looking for a ZF group like I did back in 2019. We've even planned out our Nomergon 10-man group and our Sunken Temple 20-man we plan to run with on launch day. One last route tip is that I highly recommend bringing a maze to your five-man if you can. The portals really make pre-questing way faster. Plus, it'll be great to be able to travel between Zulfarak and Orgrimmar for supplies and skill upgrades. So with our route planned out, we need to prepare as much as we can to maximize our leveling speed, but also our PvP rewards and our raid performance too. First of all, I've put out a really in-depth consumable guide for leveling and raiding, so definitely check that out in the top right. The primary consumes I'm stocking up on for leveling are primarily the greater and superior mana potions, but also the target dummies, the dynamite, anything to make leveling faster. As for the raid itself, I'm stocking up on nature, shadow, and fire protection potions just to be safe. To get all those consumes, I'm still trying to do as much last-minute gold farming as possible. It's not just for the mana potions either. I want to have dual spec at level 50 for the raid, which costs 50 gold. And I definitely want to ensure I can afford all my new abilities and my pre crafted gear too. Of course, we also can't forget stockpiling honor for PvP either. We've also got the new Warsong and Arathi Basin items. Also, the Ashen Veil quest is daily now, so you can get a thousand rep per day just doing one event. Right now, you can buy the 48 weapons, the ring, even the new Exalted Bracer from the vendor. The same applies to the Arathi Basin gear. I can't wait to put on my new level 48 Arathi Basin boots. Okay, so now let's talk about professions. Everything from key recipes to obtain and the pros and cons of profession switching. First things first, you've got to max your professions out. Second, you've got to look at your favorite profession leveling guide and decide on which recipes you'll be using to level. You can already buy pretty much all these recipes in advance from the vendors. For example, the Undermine Clam Chowder and Tenaris. But before you go out and max your professions, you've got to decide which professions you actually want. Engineering does seem like the only option for serious raiders, your sappers, your dense dynamite, your masterwork target dummies. But if you plan to only solo farm and not do too much raiding, engineering becomes far less attractive. Options like enchanting with 30 attack power and spell damage could really amp up your damage in the open world. And the new alchemy flask can amp up your attack power by 45 and your spell power by 30, but it's only usable in specific areas. But the smart move might just be to go with options like mining and skinning. That way you can make a huge profit off all the sweaty raiders, just like what Simon Eyes plans to do. So now it's time for our pre-biz planning. The best option to do is to use a tool like 60 Upgrades to set up a character with Prebis. You can pick the phase and decide on which spec you want. Then you can click through all the different gear options to make your Prebis set. Instead of going for the best possible stats, you want to go for the most realistic and easy to get Prebis set. Things like the PvP rewards and the crafted items. Those fancy purple BOEs you see on your list are almost never worth it and should really be avoided at launch. And this is also a great time to go through the list of runes for your class. By the time most of us get into Sunken Temple, the locations of the new runes will be public knowledge. Having your strongest new runes when you enter Sunken Temple will make a huge difference. So one of our keys for the first week is going to be to have a great raid comp to maximize our chances of success. 
That's why I brought in world record holder Sarth. He's gonna help us to optimize our raid to make sure we get in there and get as much loot as possible. So raid comp, we move up to 20 man teams. So you're basically combining your two 10 mans. So you can safely assume there's gonna be a two tank situation. 99% of the time, you're always just tanking with one. There's gonna be like some mechanics on bosses that stack up on a tank, which require you to taunt them off. Or there might be like two bosses where you'll need to do a tank swap. Four healers is probably safe. For week one, you might even want to run an entire healer group. So five healers, and I would wager we'll go down to three to even two towards the end. That includes getting a lot of utility out of your shadow priests. Shadow priests are going to be extremely powerful. Now, for the horde side, you're going to want a shaman in pretty much every group. And in one of the melee groups, maybe a feral druid. Especially with leader of the pack, you can bring crit to like your biggest pumper group which is going to be melee. Melee is going to pop off. So anticipate a ton, basically like a 20% just raw across the board damage buff to all melee, basically. And from there, the main thing you want is going to be covering all of your buffs and your debuffs. Sunder Armor, which is taken care of by Homunculus. You have two curses. You need two Warlock curses. Shadow Priest for Shadow Vulnerability. The other major debuffs, you want a Druid. Probably a Resto Druid right now because it looks like their AoE healing is just absolutely ridiculous with the new runes. You're going to want some AoE healing and some tank healing. And Resto Druids, Resto Shamans, they bring a lot of AoE and group-wide healing. Whereas Priests as well as Holy Paladins bring a lot of tank healing. For the rest, it's whatever tank you want. Any of the tanks are completely viable. And then it's probably one melee group and then one ranged group. Ranged are usually safer in a new raid. It's just easier to do a raid with ranged always. This Sarth interview had so many more juicy tidbits about optimizing your raid comp in phase three. But I thought to myself, Jerome, we've got the ultimate Sunken Temple raid guide coming out this Saturday. Why not save some of the very best tips for that video as well? So check that video out this weekend. You won't be disappointed. One last note on raids is that we're moving to a seven day lockout system. They're going to be way less pugs, so I definitely recommend joining a guild. And you'll also have more time to gear up alts since you won't be raiding every three days anymore. What do you guys think about the three-day lockout system versus seven days? At first, I was loving the three-day lockout system, but I kind of got burned out on the raids. Now I'm looking forward to seven-day lockouts where each raid is a really special occasion. Alright guys, so at this point we should be fully prepared for phase three. The leveling, the PvP, and of course our optimal raid comps. There's only one thing left to do, which is to thank you for watching this video. And also, if you'd like to subscribe, that would help a lot as well. Now go check out my Optimal Raid Consumes Guide. It'll really get your damage blasting.